Tech Foundry is a really great um, training program in Springfield that's completely free to get you right into a career in IT, which are really growing, high-paying careers. And then, who is not here yet, I won't spend time in case she gets here, Westover Job Corps has training programs in lots of the building trades, medical fields, as well as some other things. Westover Job Court is in Chicopee. It's free job training. You can live there or you can live at home. So they've got, a, it's a really great option for some people as well. I, I don't know if she's not here, but we're gonna move on to our panelists. So you guys ready? Okay. We're gonna take questions at the very end, but after each presenter, we'll have questions for you, and if you're engaged and you're answering, we'll give you a raffle ticket, and as always, you can pick up a prize at the end for being an engaged student. So I am gonna pass it off to Charlotte from DeGrigley. Good morning, everybody. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Perfect, so I am Charlotte Pitt. I am the admissions director at DeGrigley School. Um, we're located at 1578. Riverdale Street, West Springfield, so that's just 10 minutes up the road. Um, so a little bit of just brief history on the school. So we originally opened in the 90s as just a high-end salon. Um, due to demand, we converted completely into a cosmetology school. Um, and this year, we started our aesthetics program. So some specifics on our cosmetology program. So it is a thousand clock hour program and we do offer our students for that one uh, full-time and part-time schedule. So uh, part-time students meet from 9 a.m. to 1.15, Tuesdays through Fridays. Um, full-time students meet 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. from Mondays through Fridays. Um, so if you're gonna do Full-time, it's gonna take about eight months to complete the program. If you do part-time, it's gonna take about 16 months to get through the program. So information on our curriculum for cosmetology. So the main thing you can read through, it's broken down by hours, um, but the main thing is gonna be hair. It's gonna be hair styling, bleaching, perming, um, cutting, etc. cetera. Um, another big thing is going to be manicures. You're gonna learn manicures for nails, um, as well as some makeup application, skin care, um, and a big thing is gonna be sanitization, sterilization, hygiene, and anatomy. So for our aesthetics program, again, this just started this past year. Um, our first graduating class just graduated this last August, um, and their schedule is Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and they complete their program in about five months. Uh, more on the aesthetics curriculum. So the main thing that they're gonna be doing is going to be skin care. Um, they're gonna study skin diseases and disorders, um, anatomy, physiology. Um, they're also gonna be big in makeup, massage, um, waxing, eyebrows, eyelashes, um, and again, sterilization and sanitization. So there's a lot of careers in these fields. Um, obviously, this is not all. You can do, you can do so much with these licenses. Um, so for cosmetology, you can be a hairstylist. You can be a color specialist. Um, you can be a cosmetology instructor. For aesthetic specifics, you can be like a massage therapist. You can be a medical esthetician, um, and you can be like a cosmetics specialist. Um, with either of these, you can also be a nail technician, you can be a spa slash salon manager slash owner, um, as well as a makeup artist. So for events, we're big on events here. Uh, we have events that students can volunteer for, as well as that we do for our students. So any events that, vol that students volunteer for, they get the hours for it. So my students joining me today, they're gonna get hours towards their programs for this. Um, this helps them get out in the field, help interact with people. Um, and we do have events specifically for students such as um, advanced education classes, which we have experts in the field come in to give them a little bit more of their expertise. 
Um, so such as like barbering, we have a lot of students with us that wanna be barbers, um, and you can be a barber with a cosmetology license. Um, so we have a specialist that comes in, talks about that, talks about the little differences. Um, we also have people that come in to demonstrate like silk presses, reverse balayages, et cetera. So when do classes start? So we have a constant cycle of classes. They start every two months. Uh, what I have posted on the screen is gonna be our start dates for 2024. Um, and classes do fill up very fast. So if you're here with us and you already know, hey, I'm interested in applying to start in like July, September, November, or after, um, we recommend applying at least four to six months in advance. Um, just keep that in mind when applying. So requirements to apply. So you do have to be a minimum of 16 years of age to apply. Um, we also require you to have completed high school or have a GED certification. So for y'all, that would be having like your high school diploma or official high school transcripts for after you graduate, um, as well as a social security card, government photo ID, um, and a completed enrollment packet. Um, and some things that we recommend as staff members um, is to be dedicated, determined, um, enthusiastic and hardworking because these programs are pretty intense. Um, they're not for the faint of heart. Um, if you want to be a cosmetologist and an esthetician, these are amazing programs and they go really in detail with their studies. So how to apply. So we take uh, tours and enrollment meetings Tuesdays through Fridays, um, starting at 10 a.m. with our last one starting at 2 p.m. Um, in order to make these appointments, you just have to call the school at 413-827-0037 or you can email us at admissions at degrigley.com. Um, just to, for, for a ticket, make sure people are listening. If you're interested in applying to cosmetology school, when should you apply? Hands, please, so I can hear. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is Lynette Mendez, and I am a bilingual counselor from Mass Rehab Commission. So, hablo español, I speak Spanish, y le voy a pedir a todos, por favor, que presten atención. I'm asking everybody to please pay attention, because as we heard the previous panelists, she talked about De Gregory, right, training. And there's a cost to that, right? So. How many of you have plans of after you graduate from high school to continue on with some sort of training, whether it's a trade, college, or whatever you have in mind work? I suppose everybody wants to work after you graduate from high school. And in order to do that, you're either gonna, right after you graduate from high school, go into an entry level job, or you're gonna go for training that being a vocational school or college. And we know that a lot of colleges like HCC, STCC, do have certificate programs. It doesn't necessarily have to be an associate's degree or going to a four-year college. We do encourage it, right? But taking little steps at a time works for a lot of people. And there are a lot of trades out there that people are getting good money for it, okay? And I wanna talk to you a little bit about my agency. So like I said, I'm a bilingual counselor for Mass Rehab Commission. My office is located in Springfield, 243 Cottage Street in Springfield. And um, the mission of our agency is to help individuals with disabilities in finding suitable employment. However, for a lot of students like you, we like to work with high school students to help them determine what they wanna do after they graduate from high school and help you in achieving your vocational goals. So sometimes, you know, I meet up with students and they don't know what they wanna do after they graduate from high school, and it's okay, you don't know what you wanna do. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you determine what you wanna do after you graduate from high school. And so right now, you know, we have vendors that work with us 
um, to provide you students with pre-employment training services. So that's a great program that we're having in high schools. And these programs that we contract, these vendors, they come into the high school and they provide you guys with services, pre-employment training services. And some of these services, for example, are job exploration counseling, workplace readiness training, work-based learning experiences, counseling and post-secondary education or training and self-advocacy. So when we have our vendors come into the schools, they help you guys with um, resume writing, with soft skills, with career exploration. And a lot of times they also provide internships that are paid, where they help you guys find a job in the community to try it out and you guys get paid for that. So right now, if I'm not mistaken, the vendor that works with this school is New England Business Associates, but we also have other vendors that can work with you. So that's one of the services that we have to offer you guys. We also have another sister kind of program with us, NextGen, and they are focusing on STEM careers. And for example, those that wanna maybe go into carpentry, electrician, and those other types of vocational trades, we have NextGen, and they assist students from ages 18 into 30s, okay? Our agency takes students starting at the age of 16. Working age, you could be 80. As long as you wanna work, you can come to our agency and we can help you. Now there is different, um, there's an eligibility process, of course, that you will have to go through. So in order to be a client of our agency, you need to have a disability. Disability can be a physical, mental, emotional. There's a number of disabilities that we have listed. And for example, it could be depression, anxiety, ADHD, ADD. There's so many, you know, that, I mean, if I was to list them, you just, you know, I wouldn't finish here. It could be diabetes, back problems, it could be anything. So that's one of the pieces to be determined eligible for our services. Now, in order for us to provide funding, this is the most important piece. Do you guys have money to pay for your full training right now for college or trade? Trades can cost over $15,000. We think that you know trades are cheap, but they're not. So, you know, we're talking about a lot of money. And I know that when I graduated high school, I didn't have the money to fund for my college career. And I had to apply for FAFSA. And that can mean, you know, many times grants, but a lot of times student loans. And we know that with the interest rate so high, nobody wants to take students' loan. So if you leave this place today, don't forget that Mass Rehab Commission can help you financially. So that's why I'm here to spread the word that we can provide you assistance with funding. There are some you know, criteria to meet, but I can explain that to you if you wanna meet with me after. Um, there is you know, income base. If any of you receive public assistance, you definitely will be eligible. However, if you guys have parents that work, I can give you the breakdown of what that can be. But I wanna share my phone number with you guys so that you, know, you can ask me further questions about the program. I wanna let you know, for example, our agency this year has approved to individuals that you know, meet the criteria up to $7,500 per student to help with training. And not just students, but any other individuals in the community that need assistance. Like I said, I'm talking to you guys, high school students, but we also have adults that come to us that can no longer do a specific job and have to change their careers and need funding to provide that. So we are a funding source. So that's very important. Anybody that wants to go, for example, into electrician, plumbing, I mean, you have to pay for these trainings. We work with a lot of individuals that have come to us that wanna be truck drivers. And to get that training is over $5,000. And the agency has been able to fund that in full, which means you don't have to take a loan. So if you go into certain careers, right, that may not be you know, the cost of a college, 
then we can sometimes pay for it in full. So please don't forget about Mass Rehab. My telephone number, my work cell phone number, if you want to write it down, is 617-507-9712. For you, those that don't have a pen and paper to write it down, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to be in that corner over there where I have pamphlets to share with you guys, and I can give you more details. Um, I do want to state that in order to apply for services, people used to call our office. We used to be able to do the intake. Now it's through MRC Connect, okay? And I have flyers for that. There's information up there as well. Um, but the number for um, MRC Connect so that you can apply, you can do it via phone, is 617-204-3665. There is also a 1-800 number, 1-800-245-6543. And I can give you all that information in a piece of paper at the end for you guys to apply. The sooner you apply, the better, because if you guys are graduating in June, that means you have to apply to MRC Connect. They make the eligibility piece, and once that is complete, they transfer your case to our office in Springfield and it gets assigned to a counselor. I'm assigned to this school as well as my coworker, Adelaida Fortier, who is also bilingual. And so I encourage you guys to reach out to me. Again, my name is Lynette Mendez. I speak Spanish. And I always encourage students to invite their parents or any relatives that are interested in your future to ask me questions as well. I like to work in groups. I can come to the school as well and meet with you guys if you wish so. And there is a lot more information that I have to share with you guys, but of course we have other people that are here to speak um, and they're gonna have an opportunity as well. But please see me after so that I can give you more details about our program. So think of us as a funding source, okay? You want the money? To pay for your training, come to Mass Rehab, okay? Thank you for your attention. Have a great morning. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm, my name is Paul Sheehan. I can speak a little bit about Springfield Technical Community College's programs first, then I'll get into Holyoke. At STCC, uh, they have a, a, a pretty large array of classes related to manufacturing and machining, those kind of hands-on type skills. You may not realize it, uh, but there's businesses all over this region manufacturing things that are going out all over the world. So in Holyoke and Springfield and Chicopee, there's tiny little shops that you've paid nev never paid any attention to, but inside those walls, they're making machine parts going into airplanes, fighter jets, submarines, artificial limbs. They're putting on uh, chrome coatings on motorcycle parts, making motorcycle seats. All kinds of things are happening all around here. And the employees in those buildings have terrific cars and trucks in the parking lots. So there's terrific opportunities there. They're making wonderful little machine parts that have to fit into the tiniest little spaces. The tolerance are smaller than a human hair. Even though I no longer have hair, I know how small those parts have to be. So there, there's a lot of stuff going on out there with some great opportunities for you. That's at STCC. Also at STIC, there's a phlebotomy program for taking blood and learning, learning how to work with blood products. They also have a certified nurse aid program and a lot of other online opportunities for you. You just need to step up and go after them because there are employers out there looking for talented young people. 
at Holyoke, right up the street from here. We also have a wide variety of programs as well, uh, representing companies that are looking for employees like you. Uh, I work for Holyoke Community College, but I am here to say you do not need to go to college necessarily, but you do need some training. You can't show up somewhere thinking they're going to hire you when you're not bringing anything to the table. Because once you get out of here, you're going to be competing with people who have skills and ability that you may not have. So you gotta, you got to get ready. At Holyoke Community College, our middle name is Community. So we're trying to work with people and get them into careers, not just jobs, but careers that they may want to keep to help take care of themselves and their families for many, many years to come. At Holyoke Community College, we, we have very inexpensive work face, workplace uh, training programs related to becoming an EMT, a certified nurse aide, a medical interpreter. You know, some of you here may be bilingual. Um, maybe you've been at the hospital for where you're saying, hey, you know, that my patient, my friend or family member uh, thinking they're having a heart attack, this, that, that, this, and then you just explain that in English to the doctor. Well, it's, it's not that simple. There's a lot of legalities with that, and that could come with a medical interpreting training, which, which is a terrific opportunity for employment. Uh, certified nurse aid could lead to nursing, could lead to other careers in the medical field. Uh, for me specifically, I'm more involved with the hotel and hospitality program, as well as our culinary arts program right here in Holyoke uh, on Race Street, our Culinary Arts Institute. We have a class going right now. I just left there. The class is in there in the lab, learning how to cut up potatoes, really in certain sizes. Why? Because if they're all cooked at the, if they're all cut at the same size, they're all gonna bake or boil at the same temperature and be completed at the same time. Uh, so there's more to it than just, you know, your favorite recipe at home. You know, maybe you make your own sauce and you put in a, a teaspoon of salt to feed six people. Okay, that's great. How do we multiply out that for 100, 200 people? How's that work? Th those are the things that we cover. Uh, all around us, all around the world actually, the restaurant, industry, the hotel hospitality industry, nursing homes, hospitals, MGM. They're looking people with skills in the culinary arts. Uh, there's job opportunities everywhere. Uh, we have a couple of classes running right now. They are free. Everybody who leaves and is serious gets hired when it's over because they, are, they know about our program and its quality and they're looking for people who finish. For culinary arts, uh, we provide for free a serve safe managers licensure. Serve safe covers um, cleanliness because you, you know if you're cooking people's food and you're not doing it correctly, you make a lot of people sick. But we'll teach you about how to do that properly. Um, serve safe allergen about people with peanut allergies and shellfish allergies and all those other things. We'll cover that for you too. Uh, serve safe alcohol about how to do that correctly as well uh, Classes that we have actually we're on a tour next week of Bay State Medical Center I don't know if you realize this but Bay State Medical Center provides more meals than any organization in Western Mass why? People are there 24 7 specialty meals all kinds of thing happening there and they're looking for help and They're looking to hire people like you who may finish our program all the other uh, hospitals, the um, hotels, nursing homes, your favorite restaurants, all those kind of places um, are looking for help. And our line cook program is a great opportunity for maybe step into that world. Again, our middle name is community. Uh, I'm not gonna get into specifics about how to apply. You can figure that out by going to our webpage, perhaps talking to people that you know who've been to our school uh, who've been through some of our programs, we're happy to help. We want you to become part of the program. We're reaching out to people all the time. 
uh, looking to get people to enroll and keep moving forward. If you're part of the Holyoke Community College Pro system, We've got other resources to help you, access to bus passes and uh, emergency food stuff and every other thing, all the other tools that may help you succeed. Uh, we'd like you to become part of us. You know who we are, you know where we are, but you need to reach out and talk to us first uh, to help yourself out down the road. You tell your friends something real quick, and your dad tell them something. All right, let's see. Take a hand. Who can tell us? And this one's really easy since I have the website pulled up. Who can tell us? Somebody new. One program that of the many that HCC offers through their workforce development programs. Yes, right over there. Culinary, yay, good job. Um, culinary, CNA, truck driving, real estate, there's so many, and many of them are free. And they're pretty quick, too, depending on the program. Okay, budding entrepreneurs. We have our entrepreneurship training program next. Talk to you about what it takes to get into entrepreneurship. I've heard a lot of you say that you want to open your own business one day. So please welcome Jane. So I'm Jane Melendez. What I do is that I manage a nonprofit program that was built to help entrepreneurs in the early stages of starting a business. Um, before I get any further, does anyone know the difference between nonprofit and for profit? What was that? Yes, so nonprofit you're not paying for anything, and for-profit costs money. So if you come across an organization that is a for-profit, that means that the services that they provide are completely free. So um, with my program, we are based in Holyoke. We have about 13 to 14 sites throughout the state, um, newly launching in Maine, South Carolina, and Texas. Um, and again, our services are free. Um, right now we have a cohort that's gonna be starting and we work with entrepreneurs who are in either idea stage. So basically, you know, I have this idea that I wanna launch and also businesses who have been up and running for about two to three years. And um, <clears throat> entrepreneurs are coming to us basically because they need help, right? Just because you know a skill, just because you might know how to do hair or do lashes or do nails, it does not mean that you know how to run a business. Knowing a skill and providing a product is very different from running a business, right? Where when you're running a business, you're thinking about how to market your product, how to sell, how to price, um, building a website, um, managing the books, right? Looking at overhead costs, what does it look to? What does it look like? You know, running a business. Um, how much is it going to cost? Like, if you have a brick and mortar, right? You have a store. You know, the bills, the light, um, licensing. So these are all things that we cover in our business accelerator program. I will say that for our accelerator program, you have to be 18 and over in order to apply. Right? It's a very competitive program. We run it twice a year. Um, in the summer and in the winter. We have close to 50 to 60 applicants who apply and ultimately we only choose about 10 to 12 entrepreneurs, right? Because we're all about quantity, we're all about quality and not quantity. Um, so right now we just closed out and I'm in the works of picking my next cohort. Um, I don't wanna talk too much about you for all, but um, it's entrepreneurship for all, but we also do pitch contests and I just really wanted to talk about that. And pitch contests is like Shark Tank without the teeth. What I do is that I choose different venues around the city, um, sometimes high school, sometimes libraries, and I give six to nine entrepreneurs the platform to pitch their business idea in two and a half minutes, right? So you're basically telling me you know, who you are, what your business is, what the problem is, and how you're solving it, okay? And you can win up to $1,500. I award up to $3,000 to the best pitch. So I have a panel of judges, They'll ask questions, and ultimately they will decide who gets money. It's very fun, so if you guys ever, and you can be any age to apply for the pitch contest. I've had, the youngest I've had was 16, um, I think even 15 years old, and he won first prize, which was $1,000.
So um, you can visit us at eFraud.org. And um, right now I don't have a pitch contest um, scheduled, but I will be scheduling one for um, the spring, the upcoming spring. So tips. One of the biggest tips that I would say for an entrepreneur, if you're looking to get into that, I would say do your research. Um, research is very important when you're starting a business um, before you spend any type of money, right? So when I think research, you're looking at who's your competitors, right? Who else is doing what you're doing around your area? Um, who is your ideal customer, right? Who, like, who's going to give you the most money? Who's going to keep coming, right? Because for me, as a, um, if I'm running a business, I'm not looking to make just one sale. I'm looking to keep a customer. I want that customer to continue to come back to me, right? Um, you want to make sure that you're pricing correctly, right? And how do you do that? You're doing research. You're looking around who's doing the same services that you're doing, asking them how much they're pricing. It's okay. Um, there's enough room in the ocean for everyone, so you can call other businesses and say, hey, what are your pricing? You know, what, what are you pricing for this product? You know, what's your value? Um, and then most importantly, as an entrepreneur, you want to network, right? I attend as many network events as I can, especially like right now, today I'm here, right? Because I'm spreading the word about our program. So you want to attend as many network events as you can, and you can do that if you have social media. Um, on social media, people are always posting events. Attend them, especially if it has something to do with your business or where your customers might be, right? Look for where your customers are and um, attend as many network events as you can. And very important as well, as an entrepreneur, you don't need a degree. You don't need a, deg a degree to become an entrepreneur. A lot of um, entrepreneurs that go through our program take business, business administration in college, and that's perfectly fine, but you don't have to do that um, to, get to, be, to become an entrepreneur. Um, one of the top resources that I would recommend an entrepreneur to um, to go to is a chamber, right? The Chamber of Commerce. Every city should have a, a Chamber of Commerce. And I would recommend an entrepreneur to, to join a Chamber of Commerce in the area where they want to do business in, right? Because a Chamber of Commerce is, is basically an umbrella of different networks, right? So a Chamber of Commerce will be connected to so many um, other businesses around the area so that way you become um, a part of that, and that way um, these networks know who you are. They're always sending out blast emails, and a blast email is basically one email sent out to so many individuals who are subscribed to that chamber. So they know what you have going on. You can send, um, hey, this is, what I, you know, this is what I'm offering. These are my services. And they're always also providing um, network events. Um, the Chamber of Commerce that I'm subscribed to is Holyoke, Agawam, West Springfield, um, Amherst, North, Northampton, because I cover Hampton, Hampshire, and Franklin County. Anyone that lives in those areas are able to um, go through my program. So I, I make sure that I'm networking all around those communities. And with the chamber, they've helped me being able to connect with them because they're creating these network events, you know, bringing people together. It could be like, um, just, hey, this is community night, um, you know, we're here to talk about maybe business or we're here to talk about a certain type, maybe, you know, maybe other, just, it's great, just network events, very important. Um, the cities, every city has a city hall. They provide grant, well, they don't provide grants, but they're the, the pipeline, right? So a lot of these grants are going through the city. So if you're looking for grants, which grants are, um, you know, that's free money. So you can go to the city and they're able to let you know what type of grants you're, el you're able to apply for. Um, there's so many, there's so many resources. I would say like even EFRA, myself, um, not everyone is eligible for my program. Not everyone can go through my program, but you don't have to go through my program in order for me to help you. Um, my, we have a co-work space right on High Street, and basically um, anyone can stop in every so often, and we're able to provide them with any other resources. Because of what we do, a lot of organizations reach out to us, letting us know what they have going on, what they have offering, and I'm always sending out resources to everyone, whether that's on Instagram or Facebook. Um, Western New England College, another great source for small businesses. Again, before you spend any money, do your research, right? So Western New England College, um, every so often they do a small legal clinic and it's free where you sit down with these 
um, teaching attorneys and they're able to sit down and look at your entire business plan and let you know, you know where, where you're at with your business and some steps that you should be taking. And, and yeah, and last but not least, it's not easy to be an entrepreneur, but it's not impossible. Okay, that's it for me. I'll try not to be long. Um, so my name is Jeff Napolitano. I'm the director of Community Works. I am the director of the pre-apprenticeship program uh, that covers Western Massachusetts, the four counties of Western Massachusetts. Um, and we are a project of UMass Amherst. Uh, I was actually here last year. Uh, two students from Holyoke High School were accepted and graduated from our program. Uh, our program, a pre-apprenticeship program, is meant to get you into construction uh, even if you have no experience and no knowledge whatsoever. Um, uh, we're particularly trying to get people into apprenticeships. apprenticeships rather. Uh, a construction apprenticeship means that you start learning carpentry, plumbing, electrician work, and you get paid while you learn and work. Uh, and when I say that you get paid, uh, this is the important part, Prevailing wage for a carpenter in Massachusetts is $53.27 an hour. For an electrician, it is $56.36 an hour. For a painter, it is $50.35 an hour when you become a full carpenter, electrician, and painter. Um, when you start in an ap apprenticeship, you generally start at half that wage. So if you're you know, getting a prevailing wage as a carpenter is 53 bucks an hour, you start around 25 bucks an hour. Um, that's where you start. In every six months or every year, you get a bump in your wages as you go through. Um, our program costs nothing. Um, I am a public Massachusetts state employee. Uh, our program is publicly funded. It is run through UMass Amherst and it is publicly funded by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. Uh, to get into our program, and you have to get in, you have to be accepted, but it costs nothing. Not only does it not cost anything, uh, we actually buy all of our trainees high quality construction boots. We buy you tools, uh, and we reimburse you for a whole bunch of different training that you uh, can go through, uh, certifications like your hoisting license and so forth. Um, I'd like to speak to the women in the room right now because um, since men have sort of run the construction industry for a while, companies are looking to be competitive. They're looking to get things like um, public funding dollars for projects, and that means that they need to have more women in the workforce. Somebody guess what percentage of the construction workforce women are in Massachusetts? 10, I heard one, 8%, five. who said five? You are correct. It is approximately 5%, very good. Uh, and so five out of 100 construction workers are women, and companies call me probably three times a week uh, during construction season. <laughs> I'll get to your questions in a minute. Uh, three times a week, looking specifically for women to start working on their jobs. Um, and my trainer, the lead trainer, I'm not a carpenter. My, uh, we have a, a lead trainer who's a carpenter. Um, he and I do agree that on the whole, women actually make better construction workers than men do. So you should not be afraid of getting into construction if you are a, a woman. Um, furthermore, there's, there's no choice between going into construction and going to college. Uh, my predecessor, the guy who uh, had my job before me, had a PhD in anthropology and was a retired um, carpenter. Uh, he was be being a carpenter so for, you know, to pay the bills, but he had a PhD from UMass Amherst. Uh, my lead trainer has a, a bachelor's degree in education uh, and he's a full carpenter. But I'm gonna go through a few slides, um, but I just wanted to get to the bottom line before I do, which is that it's all about the money, quite frankly. 
Uh, union, and we really strive for, to get folks into unions, union plumbers, carpenters, laborers, painters, so forth, they have a 30 and out policy, they all have pensions, and most of them have annuities. Most of my graduates, after a few years, make more money than I do. And I, I mean, I don't make a lot of money, but I make a decent amount of money, and most of the people who graduate um, from my program in a few years when they become full carpenters, painters, so on and so forth, make more money than I do. Let me explain what 30 and out is. 30 and out means that if you start at the age of 18 as a carpenter, you get to retire at the age of 48 years old. You never have to work another day of your life. You receive a pension. You and your partner receive a pension until both of you die in, uh, the day that you die. So if you don't die until you're 90, you, you, and you start when you're 18, you don't have to work after you're 48 years old. I, there was actually a guy who ran the carpenter's office in Springfield who, gra who uh, retired a couple of years ago at the age of 49. He had started as a carpenter when he was 19 years old. He retired uh, at the age of 49. I know there are some teachers in the room right now that are really looking at me with some you know, jealousy there. Um, so, I, I'm, incidentally, I'm just a pencil pusher who works at UMass. I'm, I'm not, I was not smart enough to go and become a carpenter or a painter. I, I was dumb and I got a degree in biochemistry at UMass Amherst, so I'm not retiring anytime soon. Pensions. A pension is money that you get when you retire until the day you and your partner die. That's what is offered. A lot of jobs nowadays, they have like uh, 401ks, IRAs, blah, 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 blah. That's great. That's not the same as a pension. A pension is guaranteed money to you until the day that you and your partner die. And finally, an annuity, it's additional money that you're essentially, you put away to, you know, uh, play in the stock market, essentially. Uh, not all unions have this, but many of them do. Um, and many of them have a million or a couple of million dollars when people retire. Um, this is all part of the package. It's really good in most cases to be a uh, union construction worker. Um, so I'm gonna go through a few of these slides, and I only have a couple of them, so don't worry about it. Um, what you get from our program, you get training in construction math, you get blueprint reading, you get line and grade, uh, and you get more. You get a whole bunch of training, basically. And I'm gonna just put this in full screen. Um, you'll meet in Western Massachusetts the business agents and some of the trainers for the laborers, uh, the laborers union uh, right down the street, 596. Um, the finishing trades, which includes the painters, the operating engineers. So operating in engineers are folks who operate heavy machinery. So if you're, you see like the bulldozers or the cranes and all that stuff, those are the operating engineers. Electricians, sheet metal workers, the folks who actually will hire you into these apprenticeship programs, you will meet in the, in, in one on one basically uh, in our class. Everybody gets your OSHA 10 certification, your first aid AED CPR certification, and your roadway flagger certification. With those, you can start the day after you graduate with the laborers making 25 bucks an hour flagging on construction sites. That's just one example. Um, incidentally, you get all this free. Um, you get... <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, you have to be 18 years or older. I know some of you aren't quite 18 years yet, um, but we're actually working to, um, if you're going to be 18 in the next year, um, we probably have some leeway to accept you. Um, you have to be able to engage in physical work. You have to have a driver's license, or you have to be working to get your driver's license. I understand that you're all in high school, you probably don't have a, a driver's license yet, but if you're working towards it, that counts. Uh, last slide. Our class runs this February through April. We run Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights from 6.30 to 9 on Zoom. You don't have to go anywhere, you just have to have somewhere where you can be on a computer. 
And then on Saturdays, we run um, all day, the typical construction day of 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, and most of that's going to be actually at Springfield Technical Community College on site there. We have a space in Building 27. Uh, applications are due on Monday, January 8th, uh, and when you submit your application, it will be re reviewed by me and a bunch of, uh, you'll eventually get a, an interview with a bunch of tradespeople who basically ask you, why do you want to become a construction worker? And if you have a pretty good answer to that, uh, and all of your paperwork and everything else is in order, um, then you will be well on your way to getting into our program. That's it. Thanks. Can you sit back down, please? Um, we're going to have allow people who want to stay to connect with people. Um, we went over on the speak. Oh, can you? Do you guys mind joining us? We have um, some people from DeGrigley joining us, um, a student in aesthetics and cosmetology as well. So I'm going to have you guys break up to ask questions. I'm going to take two questions for the full panel for a ticket, and then I'll tell you where each rep will be in the room. Anybody, question for anybody up here? Working for MRC. Yep. Um, do they accept disabilities? And on top of it, Last year, I had a teacher named Ms. Vite talk about MRC, about his son went there. I was wondering if I can go to MRC, too. Yeah, yes. Um, if you have a disability, you are absolutely probably going to be eligible. They'll ask you about your income, too, probably. Any other questions for, that you want to do in front of everybody? Yes. Lau. Do you have to be 18 to start your class? April. So the program is two months long. I know it seems like a lot, but it's two months and it's free to get you into a construction trade. Now, I'm going to tell you where each organization is so that you can approach them with more questions. Will you? Okay, so right in the corner is going to be MRC. I'll have DeGrigley stay up right here near the chair since there are four of them. So cosmetology. I'm going to ask Jeff to be over in that corner. So building trades. And I am going to ask um, Paul to be at the table, right back there, there's a table. And at the other end of the chairs, we'll have Jane for entrepreneurs. And if you have a ticket, see Mr. Rodriguez for your prize. And if you don't have further questions, you can leave. But I encourage you to use this time to network. Come network with the people you want to hear more from.